think we're all set up so that all groups can actually watch today. I'm really hoping this works um, because I've had some trouble figuring out how to get all the groups in and we've had such a great response. But first off, welcome back. It's me, Sarah Fuentes, your math tutor, your math specialist. I'm here to help you and I'm glad to be back and have some work with you. I had some great questions coming in from Florida, but first, just putting this out there. It is such a beautiful day in New York. It is nice and sunny and amazing and wonderful. And it's just so nice to have some time to go outside and just experience the warmth. Um, I actually come from New York City. I'm from the Bronx and I moved up into Westchester. And I know that New York City is really struggling with all kinds of things going on with COVID-19, but every single day, they actually clap and cheer for first responders and for people in hospitals who are working and helping those who are sick. So even though I'm up in Yonkers, I clap with you. Thank you for those of you in service and for those of you are, who are at home, I know that you care just as deeply for, for those nurses and doctors who are on the front line. So we appreciate you. Okay, let's jump in today. Today is about fraction action. And, and when I think about fractions, um, I think about numbers that just look really weird and different and oh my god How many of you had such a hard time with fractions growing up? How many of you hated that topic when you were younger? What was that like for you when you had to learn to add and subtract and there were so many different rules to just remember fifth and sixth grade is for real it's tough the struggle it happens. So if you are a parent and you're struggling with helping your kid with fractions because you forgot, today is for you. Today we're going to go specifically into dividing fractions. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the steps for dividing fractions, why it actually works, why we do it in that way, and then we're going to put it into a context of word problems because it's great to know the steps, but if you don't know how to use it in the real world, kind of worthless. So I want to make sure we look at some topics like that today to help you and your kids be able to divide fractions. This is a sixth grade lesson. But before that, I posted something up on a few walls with this problem. I saw it going around and you see it's, it's a square. You can check on my page if you want to scroll down to it. Big shout out to Greg and Darlene and Lena who actually started looking at the problem and to Stephanie for sharing it. And there's some sneakers, some laces, and a man, I, I'm guessing it's a man, um, and some athlete. And we're trying to figure out how this problem actually works out. So you get a value, and we're trying to figure out what is it if you have one of the shoes plus one of the person's times one of the shoelaces. So we have to figure out the values for all of those. Thank you to those who try to go and go into the problem. I encourage you to just think about your thinking. And for me, I started by just setting each one up to a variable, to a number, and trying to figure out what is the value of that number. So for shoes, I put an X. For the person, I put a Y. And for the shoelaces, I chose Z. You can choose whatever letters you want. Just make sure it's a different one for each one. And the key to this is you have to look. That's what made this tricky. The first time you looked at it, you had to look really carefully to see what is it you have. So in the first one, and I'm sorry, I don't have the actual picture. You have a pair of shoes. You have two sneakers plus two sneakers plus another two sneakers equals 30. So you have two shoes. So for each shoe, one shoe is X. So because I have two of them, I'm putting two X plus two X plus two X is 30. In the second one, you have a person and another person and a pair of shoes is 20. And in the last one, you had two shoelaces. And that was kind of hard for me to see what it actually was. To be honest, I couldn't tell. I was looking at it and I was trying to figure out what is it. Um, it was actually a pair of shoelaces. So you had two shoelaces, another two shoelaces, and then you had a man equals 13. And you had to figure out what is a shoe plus the person times the shoelaces equals what. So that was our goal for today. Okay, so what we're going to do first is I'm just going to simplify these by combining my like terms. The things that are the same I'm putting together. So since these are all x's, we have 6x's equals 30. And that's going to help me because now I can figure out what one shoe is worth. I'm going to divide by 6. 
and I know that one shoe is going to have a value of five. Okay, so I just put them all together. If you got tricked the first time like me, no worries. Same thing happened to me. I went through this and at first I just thought I saw three pairs of shoes, so I just put three X. But then as I went through the problem, I noticed, ha, in the bottom there's only one shoe. So I, I can't just have um, just one shoe. I have to really count each one. Okay, so that's how I start there. And then in the second one, I'm gonna figure out what the Y's are because I know what the X is. Two Y's plus two X equals 20. I know X is equal to five. So I'm gonna substitute that in as if you have a substitute teacher, they just come right in. So I'm just gonna say two Y plus 10 equals 20. So I'm just gonna, you see why I'm getting this. If this is five, I'm just gonna turn this to a 10. Okay, because two times five makes 10. And now I know I'm gonna just take away 10 on both sides, minus 10, minus 10. And so I get 2y is equal to 10. So 2y's make 10, 1y makes 5. So isn't this crazy? This has the exact same value. Tricky, tricky, tricky. But we have the same value going on there. Okay? So now we're going to go to the bottom part. I know what my x's are. Well, I don't know my z's. So for z's. Plus, I know my y is equal to 5 equals 13. So I'm just going to put the 5 in there. I waste time. Okay. Minus 5, minus 5. Four z's are equal to 8. So 1z, well, I divide both of these by 4. So 1z is equal to 2. So that's where the tricky part really kind of came in because I had to figure out what one sneaker was, not just each one. And so this is my interpretation. I had to put two X's, so that equals five. Same thing here, two Y plus 10 equals 20. Two Y equals 10, so that one has to also equal five. And then I get this one is equal to two. So when I go to the bottom, I'm just gonna sub those numbers in. Five plus five times two equals what? Use my order of operations. 5 plus 10 equals, and I'm getting 15. And there we have it. That's my final solution for this answer. I'm sure different people, it depends on how you started it, how you're putting the work together. But if I know a shoe is 5 and a person is 5, but shoe laces are 2, I have to multiply first to get 10. 10 plus 5 makes 15. And there you have it. So that was just our thinking parts for the beginning. Hope that. That made a little sense. I know some people were trying to work that out and we had some different answers, but it was fun to actually work out. Okay, so let's get to some fraction work. And this problem comes from Florida. And it's from a sixth grader named Dylan. His mom, Daisy, is trying to figure out what to do. And she actually hit me up on Facebook and it was just that simple. And she was like, I remember now why I hate fractions. Sarah, please help me with dividing fractions. I asked her, well, what grade is your kid in? He's a sixth grader, so I went right back and started to look at what kinds of problems could a sixth grader do with fractions, and I found a few. So before we get to that, um, I just want to do a little bit of a review of how you actually divide fractions. Um, and I'll just do it with a simple problem. Five, six, divided by three, seven. One thing you're automatically going to notice is this is very different than if we were just multiplying. If I was just multiplying 5, 6 times 3, 7, I knew I would just go straight across 15 over 42. Problem is here, I, can, I can't do 5 divided by 3 and I can't do 6 divided by 7. Can't do it. Um, the numbers aren't going to match. They're going to be really ugly even if you tried it with a calculator. So we have to think of another way of doing this. If these were the same denominator, and I've had some kids think, how could we do this if I didn't know how to? And I start with, what if they were the same? And some kids go, okay, what if both of these had a 42 at the bottom? And they make these equivalent fractions. Times 6, times 7. And now they think, oh, okay, I can definitely divide these bottom parts 
but I can't do anything with the first, the top part. And so kids get really stuck on how to do these types of problems. And there is a method we use. And for kids, they kind of call it the Kentucky Fried Chicken or Kennedy Fried Chicken, depending on where you come from. Um, and they always think KFC is actually KCF. We're going to keep this. We're going to change this to its opposite. And we're going to flip this one around. And when we do that, we can, we actually get a number, and it's kind of ugly, 35 over 18, and I can figure out just how many make it in there. So I know that this is how many 18s make it into here, one whole 18 with 17 out of 17 18s. This means that if I divide 5 6 by 3 sevenths, I can have one whole set of 3 sevenths, and I get very close to another one. I get almost two. Okay, so these are the actual steps, but why does this actually work? This is where, honestly, it gets pretty complicated, um, but you can use arrays to help you out. So the first thing you can think about is, what if I actually had um, a set number of loops? Like, what if, just imagine, and this is, this is tough. Matter of fact, I'm going to do it with an easier number so that it makes more sense. Why don't I do it with a simpler number? Because drawing it will really help. I'm going to try with two-thirds being divided by one-sixth. Okay, I'm going to use something nice and easy that when we show it out, it'll, it'll make sense. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and show a box. So here's two, here's three-thirds, the whole thing. And in your mind, kind of imagine this is what you have. Here's two-thirds. Okay? And I want to know how many one sixes fit into here, okay? But sixes don't really make sense because I don't see them. So just so you can see, I have thirds here. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to break this up into sixes. So just imagine I'm going to just cut this up a little bit. Uh, let me see. If I wanted to have six pieces, how could I do it? I could just cut it in half, all right? So now, can you actually see the six pieces? One, two, three, four, five, six. So try and imagine, I'm trying to think, how many of this, this size piece fits in here? And what do you see? And you notice, you notice that I can have four of them in there. So I want you to just think about that for a little bit. So out of this thing here, this two thirds, I can fit one, six, four times. So how does this work in the mathematics? If I'm multiplying it by 6 over 1, I'm getting 12 over 3, which does simplify into 4. It actually works out. Why does it work? Where is this map? Where do these numbers even come from? All right, what if I broke this up into six pieces? I can still, I still want you guys to just see the 4 in there. So I'm going to break this up into smaller pieces. just so you can see them, okay? All right, now you can kind of see, I broke this up into sixes and this up into thirds. Um, so right now I have 18 pieces. I just want you to see that I have 18 little pieces in there. Three, five, I have 18. How many pieces make up the two thirds? How many pieces make up the two thirds in here? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 pieces out of 18 pieces make up the two-thirds. Do you see that here? This is telling you my number of pieces. All right? And now this is asking me, out of these pieces, think about the 1, 6 for a minute. I have six pieces here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six rows. In one row, notice I have these three. 1, 2, 3. Okay, that's how many. How many shares of three can I make out of these 12? Because that's it's an equal amount in there. So I could actually see. So I know one sixth is equal to three pieces. So I could take these three pieces, and that's one sixth. That's one one sixth. This is another three pieces. This is another one sixth. 
This is another three pieces, and that's one six. And this is an, another three pieces, that's one six. So I can share these, this part here four times. And each piece is the same size. So that's what's happening here. So this is the size. And this is how many in each group, like how many groups you actually end up with. Now, to be honest, most people don't think this way. And you will never have to think about this again, and you probably won't, but it's amazing how many even math teachers struggle with why this actually works. The reason we do this change is one, this is gonna tell me after I have a like denominator of 18, that's why I have 18 pieces here. I can divide two, I can divide three and six by 18, all fits in here. These two numbers here will tell me how many pieces make up this value, all right? So it's kind of like saying if I have 18 pieces, so because I know I'm multiplying these two together to get 18 pieces, two thirds of them, two times six, is gonna give me 12 pieces. And the, for the bottom part, it's just telling me, well, how big is this piece gonna be? So this is telling me if I have 12 18ths, if I'm gonna divide it into those three pieces, how does that work? Each piece is that big, three 18ths. Okay, I know that's kind of small. 18 divided by 18 is one, because now it's, it's one, and 12 divided by three is four. So it's telling me I have four in each one. You are never gonna have to really remember this sort of context of it, but I wanted you to see that this isn't magic. We don't do keep change flip because it's a trick. Math is not a trick, it is a skill. It is something that is logical and can make sense. And unfortunately, a lot of math kids don't know why it actually works, but here it is. Even for teachers, if you're not sure why, this is it. Pieces, size, and this is telling me number of groups, okay? But I just wanted to give you that context so you understood where it was actually coming from. And with that said, the one thing I want you to take away from this is just making sure that you know that that's why we do these steps. Keep, change, flip, to divide. And now we're gonna look at three different word problems a sixth grader will can use for context. Like where does this happen in the real world? I'm gonna show you three examples where we can happen. Okay. And I'm happy to do this with sixth graders because I'm actually working on some content for sixth graders right now. I am working on a sixth grade curriculum with geometry and I'm definitely looking for some families and kids who might be interested in trying it out and giving me some feedback and telling me what you think. So if you are interested in trying that out for me, you can simply email, you can find me either in my math group on YouTube or you can email me. I'm gonna put it right over here. My name is Sarah, remember? I'm your math tutor at math mini lessons.com. You can find me there, or if you wanted to, you can find me on youtube.com slash C, and then it's just my name, Sarah Fuentes. It's like Daisy Fuentes, just like the girl who was just asking me questions today, Daisy. All right. So with that said, we're gonna try three problems. You guys are doing fantastic. I wish I could actually see some of the comments right now, but um, I can't look through because I'm doing some math work. We're gonna try three problems and figure out how does this context work? What does it really mean in the real world to divide fractions? So let's start with the first one. And we're gonna just use a ruler example. What equation represents this model? So the thing I want you to think about is when we're dividing a fraction, the first number, we usually have a total. And we're somehow doing some type of share. Okay? So we're sharing it in some way to figure out how many groups. Like, what's our number of groups? This is a quantity. Or what's the amount shared? Or we can even, we might have a problem when we have a total. And we know how many groups but we want to figure out how much to share. That's it, these are just the two ways you're gonna see it. You're gonna see it one or the other. In both of them, you're gonna see that you have some type of total. You wanna identify what is being shared. What is that whole thing that you're breaking up into smaller pieces? 
And how are you breaking it up? Are you breaking it up into because you know how many people and you want to give every group the same? Or do you have an amount like you're cooking, you have a big pot or something, and you're scooping from there and you're taking a certain amount out and giving to each group to figure out how many groups you can have? Those are the two contexts you're going to have. So let's look here and you notice I have some type of bar model and it's broken up. Each one of these is broken up into thirds. So if you can't see it, I try to really be colorful. But so you can see these are broken up into little pieces. So each one is broken up into little. How much do I actually have? Let's try and figure out what our total is. And I know that I have a little bit more than one. And I have, I have one, I have two, and a little bit more. I have two and one third. So that's my total. I'm going to put that down there. Two and one third. That's my total. How is it being broken up? Look over here. How is being broken up? It's being broken up into two thirds. So they're separating that into an amount. Every amount gets two thirds. That's a sharing problem. So I'm dividing it into two thirds. I'm breaking it up. And how many groups can I have? How many groups of two thirds do you see? I see one, two, three full ones. So I have three full sets. And over here, I don't have a full set. I have one out of the two I need. This is telling me how many groups. Okay, this is the share and the groups. So you can see here, it's just a visual. And this is what my model is telling me. I have this much, that's my total. How am I breaking it? I'm breaking it so that everyone has two thirds. And how many pieces can I have? I can have three full pieces and I have half a piece. So that's the first context that a kid is gonna see, especially if, in, if you're in New York in sixth grade, you might see a problem starting out this way, just in terms of this. So again, our keys to success, like if you're thinking of DJ Khaled, major key, you have, this is it. Here's my key. This is what you're gonna to need to figure out this problem. You gotta know what your total is. And then after your total, you have to figure out, are you sharing it are you, or are you finding out groups to get the other number? I'm gonna try that in two more word problems now, okay? Let me know what you think about this model. This is a really common problem that comes up. So feel free to just let me know if that makes sense to you. Does that hyper representation help with the ruler? And we're gonna jump into the second problem and it's another word problem. So we're gonna read it carefully. The length of a rectangular parking lot at an airport is two thirds miles. If the area is half a square mile, what is the width of the parking lot? All right, so we have a rectangular parking lot. I know it's a rectangle um, and we know the length one side of it is two thirds and the area is one half miles and we want to figure out what is the way. Okay, what do you already know about rectangles? We know that rectangles, if I want to know the area, I'm doing length times width. So we know this part is two thirds miles. We have no idea what this is. But we know when we multiply them, I'm getting a half a square mile. Okay? So just think about that multiplication sentence for a second. If I were to plug this in, I would know that these two together, this times this, two thirds times some number is going to give me one half. I don't know what this is, but you know that you can flip your multiplication into division. So I'm gonna flip this around and take this total because this is my total right here. So I'm gonna go one half divided by two thirds is gonna give me this W. It's gonna give me this number. And now you already remember the, the steps, the second key I told you, keep change flip, flip, flip. So I'm gonna just keep this one, I'm gonna change this to multiplication and we're gonna flip, flip this one over I just want to do that. And I'm getting three fourths. 
So this side has to be three-fourths minus. And if you want, you can check your work to see. Put it in here. Let's put three-fourths. And the first thing you're going is, Sarah, it doesn't work. Look, look, it doesn't work. All right, prove to me it doesn't work. Two times three is six, okay? Three times four is 12. Yeah, you're right. I'm with you. Simplify this to one half. Six halves is equal to one half. So this does work, okay? Again, what was our key points? We had to really identify what is the total here is our total right here. And what was the part? And we know that we had one part, which was the, the two thirds. So this is an area problem. I started seeing these problems come up two years ago where they will give you an area of a triangle or an area of a rectangle and you have to figure out the other part. You have to like reverse engineer it to figure out the other piece. But if you knew the multiplication sentence, you could turn it to a division sentence and solve it. So you can see this actually really helps out. All right, let's try with another one, another breakdown. I actually like these types of problems a lot. And I have to tell you, I was being so creative today. I wanted to make a BuzzFeed quiz out of this problem. And please tell me what you think. I wanted to go and make a quiz. So if you are really watching this, um, I want to always check to see that people really understand what we're saying and if it really makes sense, if I'm really teaching you, I have to assess it and check in. So I was making a BuzzFeed quiz and trying to put in different types of problems. Like literally, I had the whole test ready. I had 12 questions ready, all these different types of problems all ready for you to try it out and see if it works. Um, but unfortunately, when I was typing into BuzzFeed, it was so hard to type the fraction bars because it doesn't exist. So when I was trying to even write, like with the first problem, two and one third, I had to go to, it had to look like this. And it just didn't look right. It, it was really frustrating. I spent about an hour doing that, but it gave me an idea. I think if we're watching videos and trying math out together, we might as well get some practice in. Because just like I said before, you're never, ever, ever gonna build this muscle and this skill unless one, you believe you can, and two, you actually put it into intentional practice. You can have the goal, but if you don't practice towards it, you're not gonna get there. And if our goal is to make you better and to support you and for you to understand and for your kids to understand, we have to have some practice and we have to know whether or not we're being successful. And I'm giving you the model, but if we don't find a way to try it out, it doesn't work so be ready I'm gonna start making little little quizzes here and there for people to try and I was even gonna title it are you smarter than a sixth grader fraction action addiction addition had the whole thing worked out next time next time all right let's try this last problem and then we'll call it for a day I hope this is so far ah, Lena thinks my break my breakdown is interesting I'm glad she likes it um, because it, it is kind of funny right now how, how it's coming together. So we're going to try one more problem together. Let me go and get, get this little part in there. Omar has two, three, um, two and three fourths cups of dough and he's making dumplings. If he uses three sixteenth cups of dough for each dumpling, how many dumplings can Omar make? All right. So remember I told you the keys. Can you figure out what your total is? Daisy, if you're home with Dylan, what do you start thinking? What is the total? And in this one, Omar has two thirds cups of dough. This is his total. That's what he has. And I know that because he's going to break it up to make smaller dumplings. That's how much he's starting with. And he's using this much for each dumpling. This is his share. That's how he's gonna share it. And we wanna know how many can he make. So I wanna know my groups. Like how many, if he keeps on breaking it, how many is he gonna get? Okay, so let's start off again. We know our total. So we we'll always start with the total. Two and three fourths. And he's gonna share it. This is his share. 
and this is going to tell me how many. All right, and for the first time, I gave you an improper fraction. I know they kind of look ugly. This is why we don't like them so much, but no worries. Just think about how many, if I have two, if I break it up into fours, then I have eight pieces. Eight pieces plus three is just 11, so I have 11 fours. Um, divided by three sixteenths, and we already said it is going to be keep change flip flip. So let's get ready. KFC keep change flip. We're gonna keep that first number. We're gonna change this one to multiplication, and we're gonna flip this one to sixteen thirteen, which leads me to my third key because it didn't show up in the first one. Take a look. Can you make your numbers friendly? So we're going to look. Really, really look. And we're going to look for situations where we can simplify this fraction. Because I already know if I'm multiplying 11 by 16, it's going to be ugly. I don't want to look at that. And if I'm a sixth grader and I'm doing this without a calculator, I'm going to make a silly mistake somewhere. It's not with the 12. I'm going to make it up here. So you're going to look carefully and you're going to think, is there a way I can simplify a number on the top and on the bottom? And I see that these two numbers, 16 and 4, I know that they have a common factor, 4. I can divide both of these numbers by 4. So I'm going to do that. Divide this one by 4. And if I divide this one by 4, okay. So just so you know what I'm doing, I'm just... I'm going to divide by 4. Why? It's just because it's a common factor of 4 to 16. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 16 divided by 4 is 4. Okay? That's all I did. So I'm going to make it look a little better by rewriting it. Look at how much easier that problem is to do now. I want to do that one. I want to do that one way more than 11 times 16. So that's where the looking really helps. It's not wrong. You could just simplify at the end. But it's going to take you some extra steps. All right, so if I had it this way, I would have 44 divided by 3. And how many 3s can go into 44? Remember, it's, a, it's almost like a little man is leaning on top. So boop. that's how some of my kids kind of remember to drop the sucker. They push it. They literally think of a little man pushing it into the house. And now it's something I can divide. And I can make 14 full pieces, and I got one little piece left. So how many pieces can he make? He can definitely make 14 pieces, and he has a little bit left, but not enough to make a 15 piece. Okay? Now, if you wanted to say, but Sarah, I'm, I'm going to go through all the trouble of multiplying. What if I wanted to do this? You could. It's just going to take longer. You are more than welcome, if you want to, to multiply those two numbers together, but you're still going to have to simplify it and you will still end up with 14 and 2 thirds. But remember the trick to this is make it efficient, make it easy, make it something that you can work with. That is the best thing about math. If we can make it friendly, if it's something that we're really using on a day-to-day -day basis, it will become much easier for us. And there you have it. That's our math lesson for today on sixth grade dividing fractions. I hope you found this helpful. Please share this with your friends. Oh, hi, Ali. I taught Ali in sixth grade. I hope he's doing well. He was like, you're the only person who ever gave me an A in math. He was a really smart kid in math class. A little talkative, but he was really, really smart. and had a, a really big smile. So I'm glad he's here for today. Um, if you found this helpful, share this. Share this with friends. If you have other friends who also have kids who are struggling in math, share it with them as well. If there are other questions or comments, put it, just add them into the comments and tell me what you want some help in. I'm here to help you. I know this is hard. Homeschooling is really hard for all of us. It's hard on teachers, it is hard on kids. So I'm here to just do my part to help families out there and to help you. So I hope you found this informative. If anything, please share. If you are a sixth grade parent interested in trying out my curriculum for geometry, please just reach out to me in Messenger or email and let me know and we can make um, and we'll communicate on the other side. Um, so that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care.